Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this is going to be my second segment of the morning. The first segment that I recorded didn't go out live, so people wouldn't have been informed that it was coming out. So I'm going to do a second segment. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. I've been reading from Imam al Nawawi's book, uh, Etiquette with the Quran, and I am now in Chapter 4, Etiquette of Teachers and Students of the Qur'an. And the first section I covered from this chapter was about the intention of the bearers of the Qur'an. And then earlier this morning, I did a small segment about not seeking a worldly objective and about not objecting to students reciting with others. And continuing on in the same vein of qualities that a teacher and students should strive to have, Imam Nawawi says, The scholar should be molded by the good qualities mentioned in the revelation and the praiseworthy inner qualities and the pleasing habits that Allah Most High guided to. They include abstinence in this world, thinking little of it, and lacking concern for it and its worldly people. And they include generosity, open-handedness, noble character and a cheerful face but without becoming immodest. This last one sometimes so are people. Um, you can smile at people and you can have a cheerful face, right? Fine. But then you have some people that have this weird evil grin on their face. Or they smile so much you, you really have to wonder what's going on in their head, okay? So he mentions a cheerful face but without becoming immodest. And they include discernment, self-control, and being above vile acquisition. They include adhering to scrupulousness, humility, tranquility, dignity, modesty, submission, and avoiding laughter and frequent play. Um, something to remember is that the scholars will often remind us to avoid too much laughter because of the hadith that too much laughter will kill the heart. And although it's nice to laugh and joke around, we need to keep it within limits. If we get too excessive, then our hearts will start feeling numb and anesthetized, and it will no longer feel joy when it should feel joy, and it's not going to feel sorrow when it should feel sorrow. So we need to be very careful that uh, we don't engage in too much laughter. And this, by the way, is one of the reasons why we will see in some thick books that they mention that people who become professional comedians are engaging in something that's not only unlawful, but it's worthy of a disciplinary punishment, um, which would probably shock some people today. But that's what the ulama of the past pointed out. And I think that when it comes to personal character, they probably have a much better understanding of what we're supposed to have than what we do today. Okay, so he says, they include among the tasks that a scholar or a teacher should uh, be worried about. He mentions that they include adhering to religious tasks, so carrying out the things that Allah has commanded him to do and avoiding the things that he's supposed to avoid, right? That's what you would probably think. Yes, but also other things. He mentioned such as cleanliness, removing filth and hair, that the legislation mentions removing Okay, so removing the filth and the hair that the legislation mentions removing. Okay, so taking a shower, bathing, okay, to remove any bad smells, to remove any dirt that they've picked up, and also to remove the, the hair that the Sunnah mentions uh, removing, such as under the armpits and around the genitals. These are Sunnahs. Um, and also trimming the mustache and also trimming the nails and combing the beard and removing offensive smells and also removing offensive clothing. And so something that you should notice here is that Imam Anawi is getting at something that we often miss and that's that the outward expression that we present is an indicator of what's inside. Okay? How we dress and how we behave is an expression of what's in our heart. And when our behavior and our dress conforms 
to the religion, then that gives an indicator that our heart is conformant with the religion. So outward actions express what we really have inside. So we can't look at the intentions of other people. They can inform us of what their intentions are, right? With their, with their tongue, they can tell us what it is. We can't look inside, but their tongue and their actions can give us a hint of what those uh, intentions truly are. Okay, and the scholar should take every precaution from envy, showing off, pride, and thinking little of others as they are, any, even if the person is beneath him. So even if someone knows that they are the best scholar in the world in their particular field, they shouldn't get arrogant about other people, especially students that are coming along. Because those students are probably going to pass them at some point. Um, and these things that he mentions here, he's focusing on the scholar primarily right now. And later on, he's going to say that the things he mentioned of scholars and teachers also go for students. But his focus is on teachers right now because teachers are supposed to be the examples that the students would follow. So he's concentrating on them right now. And at the end of the book, uh, at the end of this chapter, he's going to talk more about precautions from envy, showing off pride, and thinking little of others. Now, if you're interested in learning more about these qualities, then Imam Anawi has you covered. In Riyadh al-Salihin, which is often translated as Gardens of the Righteous, he talks about these sorts of qualities. You also can find them covered in books like uh, Ihya al uh The Revival of the Sacred Sciences. Uh, you can also find them mentioned in other books by Imam al-Ghazali, like uh, The Beginning of Guidance. So, if you want to know more about these good qualities, look in books of Adab. So, books by Imam al-Ghazali are a good start. Or at least his books on Adab, because remember, Imam al-Ghazali wrote as much about fiqh as he did about Adab. Um, so, I would recommend, if you're interested in improving your character, I would recommend picking up a copy of Riyadh al-Salihin, going through it. I would also recommend looking at a book like The Beginning of Guidance by Imam al-Ghazali. Both of those books have been translated into English, and they're good translations. And there you can find out more of these things. So one of the takeaways that we get from this, your outward behavior needs to conform to what Islam teaches us. This, this is important for a scholar or anyone else who operates in public. And next, Imam Anawi says that the student, uh, the teacher should implement the hadith that were related concerning saying Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah, and other adhkar, and other supplications, and other du'as. And just like Imam Anawi wrote a book about the previous paragraph where he talks about good qualities, he also wrote a book about the supplications that he's mentioning here. Kitab al-Adhkar, the Book of Remembrance, also translated and published in English. The teacher should be constantly conscious of Allah Most High when alone and when in public, and his reliance in all of his affairs should be upon Allah Most High. So, going back to what's in this little section and the previous one, your actions in public and in private, the actions that you put on your limb, as well as the actions in your heart, they got to match. If they don't match, it indicates that there's some sort of insincerity in what you're doing. It means that you are mixing your intentions with something other than Allah. The next section is about being kind and accommodating. The teacher should be kind to whomever recites to him, welcoming him and being well-mannered with him in accordance to his circumstances. When a student comes to you and he's in a bad mood, don't chastise them for being in a bad mood. Ask him what's going on. Perhaps there's an issue. Um, I know of, of one sheikh that he, when counseling wives about how to greet their husbands when they come home, 
Something that he said is don't immediately ask him how was your day at the office. Take a look, are they in a good mood or are they in a bad mood? Before you jump in with questions, assess how they are. Because maybe they had a really stressful drive home and what's gonna happen if you start stressing them out with lots of questions? And if you start stressing them out with demands? It's only gonna get worse, right? So when a student or someone comes to you, try to assess their current situation so that you don't make it worse. You don't escalate what's already there. So the teacher should be kind to whomever recites to him. And we know that kindness doesn't make anything worse, right? Kindness is one of those things that you can employ probably in 99.9% .9 of all situations that you encounter. So the teacher should be kind to whomever recites to him, welcome him, and being well-mannered with him in accordance to his circumstances. Good manners can vary from person to person. Some people you have to treat uh, with incredible kindness and tenderness. There's other people, if you did the same to them, uh, it would backfire. So you got to know your students. We related that Abu Harun al-Abdi said, we would come to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him. And he would say, welcome to the beneficiaries of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, people rely upon you. Men will come to you from the earth's regions and require, uh, acquire religious knowledge. When they come to you, make them your concern. Termidhi Ibn Majah and others related it, and something like it was related to us and the Musnad of Adarami by way of Abu Darda. May Allah be pleased with him. So we have a report um, transmitted by Abu Sa'id al Khudri and another one transmitted by Abu Darda that tells us that the students that come to us are like the beneficiaries. They're the people that are going to benefit. And they are going to inherit from the Prophet ﷺ. They're coming to seek their inheritance from him. And when they do, we need to make them our concern. And something that I get from this report, and that some of my shayukh pointed out to me, is that teachers serve. Teachers are there to serve students. Students aren't there to serve the teachers. And we need to have this perspective. When people come to us to study, we are there to serve them. Allah is using us as a means for them to gain knowledge. We need to keep treat them kindly to make sure that they don't go somewhere else. And even worse, make sure that they don't go away and don't find someone else, okay? So when people come to us, we need to treat them kindly, um, even if they're in a bad mood, even if they're a little bit gruff with us. We need to treat them kindly, and we're going to find out later on in the book, and I kind of skipped ahead, is that we're supposed to ask our students about how things are going. And if a student doesn't show up, we're supposed to go find out how they're doing. Okay, so we need a perspective change. Right now, a lot of uh, people have the idea, and some of it is justified, that Teachers of the Qur'an are mean. They're mean-spirited people. They're looking for opportunities to beat people. If we look at a book like the one we're reading here, it's the opposite. They, they, they should never be doing that. Imam Anawi is going to talk about physical discipline later on. And it's very, very restricted. Because one of the things Imam Anawi hammers home here is that the teacher is supposed to always be looking at the best interests of the student. And those best interests, uh, how to obtain them, can vary from student to student and age to age. And he points out that in the case of discipline, it's never for the sake of the teacher. It's always for the sake of the student. Okay, We teachers are supposed to be here to serve so that people can get access to Allah's disciplines so that they can seek his pleasure. And there should be no animosity. There should be nothing in our hearts against our students. We want to facilitate their journey because them coming to us is part of our journey.
And I think I've said enough today. Uh, remember, this was the second segment of the day, the first one. Uh, even though it was live, it was only shared to my, my small friends list. So after watching this and inshallah sharing it and liking it and maybe leaving a couple comments, make sure you view the other video and do likewise. Um, if you like what you're seeing in these segments, would you please leave a comment below and let me know how things are going. And if you're finding these beneficial, make sure you sh share them so that other people can also join in this benefit. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.